What things come to mind when I say how do you get smarter? Is it your natural IQ or gifts? Or is it simply hard work? What if I said it's actually your behavior? My name is Matthew Jones. I was on the pre-med path at the University of Colorado Denver I graduated from. I've directed programs full of screaming kids, adults, and done many one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions for people who want to learn to do some rather difficult skills. However, the more years went by teaching, the more more apparent it became that intelligence or how smart you are is really the specific actions that you direct your focus towards and you can apply these actions or behaviors to almost any skill you could want. Specifically, three behaviors that I want to share with you today. Getting straight to the point, the first behavior is what I explained to a new teacher called Spot the Droids. This is of course from Star Wars Episode 4 where Obi-Wan fools the stormtroopers who now enter what is going to be a hopeless goose chase that is going to get them absolutely nowhere. The thing that made me so desirable to so many clients is you want to get very quick at spotting exactly what you need. The source that makes what you're trying to do work so you can immediately take notice when it's off and don't make the mistake of thinking that all these other weird wacky things or rituals are responsible for the progress you want. Specifically, it's boiling down what you're doing to the two or three essential things that if we take them away, suddenly causes your cartwheel, the violin you're learning to play, the sea of anatomy notes you're studying for a class to completely fall apart. Nothing makes sense and you become stuck in a purgatory where you work really hard and make virtually no progress. Two examples. One, if you're studying for an anatomy or even an acting class like I did in my days of sprinting from my undergrad anatomy to a Shakespeare class across the street, I eventually learned to be ruthless and narrowing down to the few major ideas that everything else rested upon. The underlying things that the entire circulatory system unit we were studying worked off of and used that as my base for attaching everything else I learned to. So now all the hundreds of little things and slides that teachers are asking you to memorize actually makes sense. I would have never kept up working a job the same time as I did this. A major example that I deal with every day is say you want to do a front flip. The only things I'm looking for is your rotational speed or how fast you can actually flip, how you block your momentum to go up and not superman dive towards the wall like everyone does, and your balance. Because most people favor one leg and will almost always shift their weight to that leg for most tricks and move at a weird diagonal that just kills the move. Those three things are pretty much it. Notice I didn't once say that you need to point your toes, your fingers, spot some random brick on the wall, puff out your chest like a peacock. These are all instructions I have heard teachers give. And as hilarious as it is to see students run down a trampoline puffing out their chest like Mr. Incredible, these instructions instructions are irrelevant from whether or not the skill is going to work, and in my experience can be a really convenient way for teachers to hide but not always. The second behavior that really goes hand in hand with the first is to attack whatever you're trying to learn like you're grinding in a video game. For most people, this is where we can enact the rule of 100. By this, I mean to do whatever you're studying or doing so many times that you're absolutely sick of it. This is also the one that I found most people will not do. They hate doing volume. And more than that, if you stack this behavior on top of the first one, they hate doing focused volume. Thoughtful repetition is much harder than mindless repetition. Thoughtful repetition in mass means that you're looking to see if you're really learning quickly by giving your brain a massive amount of stimulus, focusing on the essentials that actually give you the progress you want. Mindless repetition just makes you feel like you're working and staying busy. No one wants to be the actor who is seen reciting their lines right before they go out on stage. This happened more than you might think. Your brain needs as much stimulus or hands-on time as it can possibly get to learn. The more you experience something, the more your brain can do some pretty amazing things that other people don't get. Imagine it like a video game, where you have a sword to beat enemies. The first time you learn something new, your brain will always tend to spend your experience points on upgrading your sword so it can do more damage, and it will destroy useless parts of your sword, making it lighter 
better and stronger. If something is completely new, your brain will then resort to building brand new connections to store that information. But this is very costly and your brain doesn't like to do this. This is like your brain building some brand new attachment that just makes the whole weapon better. Basically, you want to make the base of your weapon out of the highest quality metal that you can, and everything else you learn from then on will make way more sense. The third trick is the hero we need to combat the major villain that will destroy everything we've done up to this point. The hero being the spacing effect and the villain being the menacing forgetting curve. The spacing effect means that in order for your brain to make your upgrades permanent, you need to revisit exactly what you did again. This is because when your brain makes any upgrades or otherwise spends your experience points, it has a responsibility to undo most everything you did that day, taking away your experience points as if it never spent them, if you don't come back to them. This is known as the forgetting curve. The way to understand why this happens is imagine it like your brain always wants to do you proud. It wants to make sure that the upgrades it gives your weapon are something that you really want. So the first time you grind away and your brain goes to spend your experience points, it will do so very hesitantly. It will lightly attach those upgrades to your sword before it fully fuses them to it. Because the second your brain realizes that you don't actually want those upgrades because you never came back to them ever again, it will run back to the store, hurl the upgrades at the shopkeeper, and get you your money back. And it is very good at this. I like to give students a rule of three, where they retrace every step they did on three separate days before moving on to new steps for whatever skill they want. Here's the twist to upend any fears or apathy people might be feeling, because yes, this is a lot of work, and this is what work looks like. The power rule. A rule one of my best teachers gave to me that states, if I or someone else fails to learn, it is my fault no matter what. Your brain is designed to adapt and grow stronger with each challenge it faces. And because intelligence is a behavior or set of actions that cause your brain to evolve faster than it would otherwise, you are in more control than you might realize. Your brain loves to evolve through effort. This is why I had a nine-year-old old hyperactive client who threw himself at our lessons. I could give him all sorts of information and he absolutely crushed another 18 year old client who wasn't really too happy about pushing himself. He was easily distracted, probably couldn't set through an educational video without checking five different things, and I am being very nice when I say he learned some 20 times slower than the 9 year old. All you have when you get out of college is your skill. What can you actually do? Give yourself the power now to work thoughtful and hard to gain your skills instead of hiding behind the word you're busy. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved one fact for last. The fastest way the brain learns new information is through something called neural reuse, where the more overlap what your learning has with something you've learned before, the quicker your brain can upgrade itself. The amount of overlap overlap I found students need with a previous skill to have the most momentum and progress is somewhere around 70 to 80 percent. With us going over neural reuse and how to apply it to yourself in this video that seemed to help out a lot of people. I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next one.